Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. I want to do a little bit of performance testing to see if hyper-threading makes a difference, first of all, in X-Plane, and secondly, to see at what point in reducing the number of cores, core count, um, do you start to see a performance degradation in X-Plane. I was doing some testing earlier, and it looks like, you know, in the past, two cores is really all you needed, but it looked like um, in the testing I was doing earlier, when I dropped below four cores, I actually started to see a, a decrease in performance. So we're going to see if we can sort of prove that. So what I've done, this is an 8700K processor, and it's a six core and 12 thread processor. So what that means is it's got um, six physical cores, and each core is divided into two threads via hyper-threading. And if you don't know what hyper-threading is, think about uh, the drive through at McDonald's. Occasionally, uh, some of the McDonald's, they'll have two places where you can place your order. And, but there's still only one window to pick up your food. So, um, that is sort of what hyper-threading is. There's two ways for the data to get to the CPU core, but it still is all being handled by one core. So, Sometimes the McDonald's drive through is a little bit quicker because of the two ordering stations, and sometimes it's not. And that's sort of the case with hyper-threading. So right now we've got hyper-threading turned on, and so what we're seeing is we're seeing, again, to the operating system, it looks like there's 12 cores, when actually there's just six cores divided, each of them in half, into two threads. And so what, what this benchmark does is it runs a predetermined flight path and measures the frame rate during that flight path. So what I'll do is I'll run it, you know, now with hyper-threading turned on, and then we'll run it again with hyper-threading turned off, and then we'll start reducing cores until, well, I'll just keep reducing core, reducing cores until we get down to one and just see what it does to the frame rate. So here's the benchmark running. It takes, I think, 90 seconds for this benchmark to run. It's a predetermined flight path. It's a little jerky the way whoever put this flight path in. Um, you know, the jerkiness is not typical of what you'd see in X-Plane. And some of the anti-aliasing settings aren't quite what I would put them at. I mean, you can see a lot of jagged lines here, but this is a predetermined benchmark that was put in by the developers, so we're just going to go with that. And again, that jerkiness you don't normally see. Okay, so we refer to our log.txt file, and we get a frame rate count. Um, and so now we're going to reboot and go into the BIOS, and I'm going to change, and, and this time I'm going to turn off hyper-threading, which is that technology that splits each core into two individual threads. So once I'm in the BIOS, if I go to uh, Advanced Frequency Settings, Advanced CPU Core Settings. By the way, I have this thing locked at um, 4.5 gigahertz, so we see our clock ratio is 45. I've also set the Windows Power Profile to high performance. That way, even if the CPU is not heavily loaded, it's just going to stay at 4.5 gigahertz regardless. And so we're going to keep the same 4.5 gigahertz clock through the entire testing process. So um, what I do is I'm going to go down here and find uh, hyper-threading, which is in here somewhere, hyper-threading technology. I'm going to turn that to disabled now. And then I'm going to save and exit the setup. And then when we go back into Windows, we'll see that we only have six threads. We still have all six cores turned on, but we'll only have the operating system will only see six threads. So to the OS, it looks like we just took half the cores away, when all we did was take half the threads away. We'll see that now we only have six total threads to work with. So now we'll run the test again and see how that goes. Okay, we're back in the BIOS. I just ran the test with six cores without hyper-threading. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to start reducing the number of cores. So right now we're set to six cores. 
I'm going to change that to 5. I know that might sound weird. There's no such thing as a 5-core processor. But the reason I'm doing is I want to see at what point frame rate gets reduced by taking away cores. And it may be that it happens at, from going from 5 to 4. But I would never know that if I didn't run that test. It's just information. I know, again, there's no such thing as a 5-core CPU. One thing I'll mention further is we're running this test at 2K resolution. So it's halfway between 1080p and 4K. I thought that was a pretty good compromise. Um, so that's 2560 by 1440 is the resolution that we're running. And we look in our task manager now, we see five cores. Kind of an unusual sight to see like an empty spot there. But we do indeed have five cores. So we'll run it with five now. Well, the results from the single display uh, test as far as scaling across cores was rather uneventful. I know you haven't seen the results yet, so I said, well, shoot, let me try to get some variance in here. So I said, let's go to the quad system and uh, see what we can come up with and Windows updates. So, uh, isn't that always the case when you want to do, do something? There's a Windows update, so it happens to us too. Okay, so I'm back. We finally got the Windows updates done. We've updated X-Plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hope, first of all, that um, the number of cores matters more when you're running individual Windows of X-Plane. So we have one, two, three, four separate discrete Windows of X-Plane. Um, we're only running X-Plane once, but again, it's th uh, four individual windows. You can sort of see what our processor is doing right now, but we've got six cores plus hyper-threading, and that's why you see 12 boxes there. So I'm going to run through all of the tests again and see if um, having more cores matters. Um, it's the same processor, it's an 8700K, but in this case, we're running it at 4.9 gigahertz because I have over, excuse me, delitted this processor, and I've been able to bump it up to about 4.9 gigahertz. So the, all of them we run at the same clock speed. All we'll be doing is taking away hyperthreading and taping, taking away processing cores, just like we did on the single display test. Okay, so hooking up and uh, working with the quad screen package, unfortunately, did not have better results for multi-core scaling for X-Plane. Um, I'll put the numbers up first though for our single display test. And I'll remind you that was done at 2560 by 1440, which is uh, 2K. Um, so somewhere between 1080p and 4K. And as you'll see, we really didn't see any performance degradation until we got down to dual core or two cores then we saw a little bit of a drop. Um, but once I added hyper-threading back to that dual core, remember what hyper-threading is, uh, it actually brought the performance back up. Um, what I was seeing when running only two cores was X-Plane was slowing down periodically because some of the other system processes like the anti-malware service and all kinds of different services that run in the background were demanding just a little bit of the CPU time and since we only had two cores, it would occasionally cause a, a drop in performance on the dual core. One thing I'll mention too uh, that I've, I have not mentioned to this point is this is a plain vanilla X-Plane. Uh, this, this is a built-in plane we're using. No add-on scenery, no plug-ins, no nothing. Just four individual windows of X-Plane and then of course on the single display one, uh, one window of X-Plane. Um, as far as the version of X-Plane, it's the latest as of today, which is 11.20 R4. Now we went over to the, to the quad screen and hope to see more variance between, you know, six, three, five, however many cores. And unfortunately, it was sort of more of the same. We didn't really see much variance at all until I got down to dual core or two cores. And once I let all the other system processes kind of settle out, all the things that start up with Windows, um, the frame rate got came back up to almost 
the same as uh, the six core did. Um, and then adding hyper threading to the dual core didn't really seem to make much of a difference. So unfortunately what we're seeing here is once again cores for most people, core, the number of cores don't matter when you get, the quad core is fine. If you're thinking about buying an i9 with, you know, eight cores, or, or um, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all about clock speed. So X-Plane craves gigahertz. The more you have, the better you are. Now that doesn't mean something won't change. That doesn't mean that VR doesn't come into play and maybe it changes the equation a little bit. But I just want to see what vanilla X-Plane would do in this situation. Now one thing I will mention too is um, the load process is faster on multi-core chips. So X-Plane does a good job of using all of your cores during the loading process. And what I mean is when you're starting up X-Plane number one, or if you were, let's say, in New York and you decided, I want to go fly in San Francisco, and you said, take me to San Francisco airport, um, that would be a load process. And that scaled with all the cores. The more cores we had, the faster it was. I didn't time it because really, that's a small part of your uh, simming experience. The bigger, more, more important thing is how it affects frame rate. And again, unfortunately, you'll see, you know, in the graphs I've put up that it really does not make much of a difference at all. So maybe, maybe in the future, maybe with Vulcan, we'll see a, a different story there.